Okay, welcome to the live broadcast, the CSN AA Pre-Conference Webinar Jam. Uh, we have about 60 people registered tonight and people are coming online. I can see them coming online. We've got 20 out of the 60 that are registered that are actually here with us right now. Um, I'm really excited about the conference. If you haven't already registered, this is a great opportunity to find out more about it. And um, just to let you know, just beforehand while people are coming along, my name is Sherry Strong, and I was one of the keynote conference speakers last year, and I had, I've offered actually to do this webinar for um, CSN AA to encourage people to get the most out of the conference. So if you haven't already figured it out, that's what we're here for tonight. And I've got a presentation that I'm gonna actually share with you. And I'm also gonna allow for some questions towards the end. So there is, if you're not familiar with this setup, there should be to the left, if you actually see, there's kind of um, these boxes, one that says chat, one um, um, where you can actually enter in questions. I'm going to ask a few questions through the night and take a few polls. You can actually um, enter in what it is, uh, the answers for that. And um, I'm going to share a bit of information. And at the end, uh, if you there's a little icon above your name where you can actually raise your hand to ask a question. Or you can actually even type it into the chat window. I'd be happy to answer it that way. So we've got probably half of the people that have registered who have actually shown up so far. And as always, with, particularly with webinars, people tend to come a little bit later. Um, and as I don't want you to miss out on anything, and we've got you know limited time tonight, I'm going to get started pretty soon. But I just want to say welcome to my little abode in West Vancouver, in British Columbia. For those who haven't, this just for those of you who tend to make fun of us British Columbians, this is what it looks like outside. So that is, in case you're in disbelief, that is actually sunshine <laughs> uh, after a few days of rain. And um, so it's it's turned out to be quite a beautiful day. I went uh, walking in the rain this morning, so it was fairly intense. Um, but we're gonna get on with the program. Just double checking. I've got no text messages to say that people can't hear me. That's a really good thing. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to share my screen and uh, so you can actually see my presentation. And then I will come back online after I've finished my presentation. So let's just get started here. And for those of you who are coming on late, this is the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition Alumni Association. Um, pre-conference webinar jam with myself, Sherry Strong. As I don't want you to miss out on anything and we've got you know limited time tonight, I'm gonna get started pretty soon, but I just wanna say welcome to my little abode in West Vancouver in British Columbia. For those who haven't, this, just for those of you who tend to make fun of us British Columbians, this, is what it looks like outside. So that is, in case you're in disbelief, that is actually sunshine <laughs> uh, after a few days of rain. And um, so it's it's turned out to be quite a beautiful day. I went uh, walking in the rain this morning, so it was fairly intense. Um, but we're gonna get on with the program. Just double checking. I've got no text messages to say that people can't hear me. That's a really good thing. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to share my screen and uh, so you can actually see my presentation. And then I will come back online after I've finished my presentation. So let's just get started here. And for those of you who are coming on late, this is the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition Alumni Association. Um, pre-conference webinar jam with myself, Sherry Strong. And this seminar, webinar, is really all about helping you, whoops, I did the wrong thing there, <laughs> helping you get the most out of the, the conference, okay, to have a super engaged, 
stress-free experience at the CSMN AA conference. Okay, first of all, I like to start off with a little bit of gratitude and say, oops, I don't know what happened there. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> Technology. It's never 100% foolproof, so apologies. First of all, I want to say thank you to the, um, the conference committee board um, and volunteers for the amazing job that they do actually putting on this conference. It's quite an extraordinary event um, for people to actually be doing, and there's wonderful things that come out of it. So I'm going to share a little bit of that with you tonight, but I just wanted to give a shout out to um, Eleanor and Patricia, um, just to begin with, and um, everyone else who's involved in the conference. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about a few things tonight. Why this is a must-attend event of the year, and how to get the most out of the conference. How to get noticed and connect with the right people at the conference who can help accelerate your career and business. How to network in a way that's more effective and makes the event more enjoyable. And I'm going to give you a few pre-conference tools to actually get you in the mood and, and get you pre-primed for the actual conference so you can actually get the most out of it. And I want to help you um, to really understand how you can actually identify the best information to implement for your business and the work that you're doing now in the world. So I want to also let you know that tonight one lucky webinar attendee will actually win a signed copy of Return to Food. That's my book that came out in November last year, Zoodlemaker, which if you don't know about this already is the best tool in the world for making zucchini noodles and grating things. And um, my digital DVD, Seven Recipes for Life uh, ebook and DVD package and a laser coaching with me in person at the conference. Okay, and if it's too hectic at the conference, um, we can always do that via Skype. But I just want to let you know, this is an incentive to stay to the end of the webinar because you'll have a chance to actually win this. And I've also got a special gift for everyone who attends tonight. So I want to, um, just for those of you who may not be familiar with myself, I was actually the keynote um, speaker, I've actually got the wrong date there on, it's 2014, uh, one of the keynote speakers last year at the conference, and I gave what I call my signature keynote, which is a cooking keynote, and it was so much fun, and I also had the privilege of actually giving the closing keynote, and I tell you, it was the conference was such a hit, it was actually a career highlight for me, and it was so good to be absorbed with people in tribe and in sync where people really genuinely care about doing something to make a difference in the world and it just felt wonderful so I'm actually coming back not as a speaker this year although I've got a, a five little minute um, bit uh, but as a exhibitor because I think it's a fantastic event if you're involved in this industry. So a little bit of my background, in case you don't already know, I've worked with some amazing people around the world, like Jamie Oliver, David Wolf, Muriel Hemingway, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, um, the um, Princess Takamoto from the Japanese royal family, Brett Wilson, and Theo Fleury. And some of these people have been my clients, and some of them have been my um, colleagues, and definitely mentors. What I'm doing now is I actually train people to become Return to Food coaches uh, through the Return to Food Academy. And I've also had my own kind of health and well-being transformational story where I often tell people I was twice my former size, not 10 foot 4. <laughs> and um, this uh, pursuing this life of holistic living has really been significant to um, me developing a really happy and I believe successful life. Okay, so let's get on with what um, you actually signed up for. That's my credentials. Now I want to talk about you and why I think it's really important, um, uh, why I think this is a must-attend event of the year, and how you could potentially get the most out of the conference, things that I've actually learned over the years. So I have attended literally hundreds of conferences over the years. I've spoken at hundreds and I've attended hundreds and what I basically um, have developed over these years is first I started out as having a real fear and hatred of networking and now I can honestly say that I love going to conferences and that it really um, 
I, I believe that it's one of the most significant things to accelerate your business, whether you're there um, as an exhibitor, whether you're there as an attendee, whether you're there as a speaker, no matter what capacity that you're actually there, you will be amazed at connections and conversations you will have because you're actually in person that you'll never actually get when you're just kind of doing the networking locally or in your own environment or particularly in your own home. So it's important to get out. So there you're actually going to connect with people who are doing what you'd like to be doing. In some capacity, you're going to find people who are actually doing what you would love to be doing. And so it's really important to actually be there for that, that reason alone. People who are creating successful businesses, um, like Karen Porter, who I met last year at the conference and is now um, working to become a return to food coach, along with some other amazing people. And you're going to see doers, movers, shakers, and those who are giving back, because that's equally important. It's not just about, you know, what we're, um, how we're actually showing up in the world that creates significance for ourselves, but really, truly getting that piece of where your significance you can actually do that. The main purpose to have significance in this lifetime is to leverage that to be able to help other people. And this is where you're going to meet people who are actually doing that, actively doing that. There's also the expo area, which has fabulous businesses and people who are offering products of integrity and services where people are truly coming from the right place, wanting to serve and offer something that truly is helpful, holistic and healing to the planet. And I personally, um, when I first started going to conferences, I had a different intention behind going to expos, and I just really wasn't sure what the value was. I thought it was just people trying to sell me things. And sure, there's that element. Obviously, nothing happens in the world without, without a sale happening. But it really was an opportunity to actually see what's actually going out in the world, what products people are creating, what what products actually create demand, you know, what booths, um, you know, aren't getting that much interest, why aren't they getting that interest, what is it about the booths that are getting interest? There are so many things that you can actually learn from just walking through the expo area and starting to have conversations and connecting with people, that, that alone is a significant value going to conferences and it's certainly one that I as a speaker for many years completely undervalued really amazing people with amazing knowledge. One of the things they say about the TED conference, and I had the privilege of going to TED the last year, it was in Monterey, 2008. And then again, um, I went um, and spoke at uh, TEDx Tokyo in 2009. And the catchphrase for TED is that you'll find just as amazing people off stage as you will on stage. And I find that at every conference, that not always the most interesting, the most knowledgeable, and the most amazing people actually make it on stage. And there's an interesting expression in the speaking world that says a, a speaker um, is someone who, you know, or, you know, a celebrity um, expert is someone who's from far away. And the further away they are, the more of an um, exciting speaker or valued they are. So there's that kind of the exotic and the unknown. And there's an expression about you can't be a, a prophet in your own town, um, as in prophetic, as in um, people really valuing your information. And the truth is, is that there, there are people who actually attend that conference, or will attend this conference, and who will be in the expo area who have an amazing breadth and wealth of knowledge. This fellow was... Um, selling raw chocolate at the conference last year and I was so excited because I had the privilege of being in the booth next to him <laughs> and for those of you who don't know chocolate I believe is God's way of saying he loves us and wants us to be happy and his story and the way he you know he talked about chocolate was absolutely amazing truly passionate person and really inspiring to be around okay so as you know the theme of the conference is all about stress and the whole idea behind the conference is really to help you understand um, what it is that you absolutely need to know as a practitioner to basically help your clients. Okay, so I'm just going to actually start with a little poll and I'm going to ask you a question. Do you ever get nervous going to conferences? So there's yes, no, or it depends on the conference. So if you can just 
give your your vote so everyone if you don't know how to vote there should be a little poll icon in the top uh, top uh, right hand part of this webinar jam um, and this is where you can actually vote do you get nervous going to conferences okay so we have 67 percent of people saying no and 33 percent people saying depends on the conference oh we've now got 33 saying yes 50 percent no 70 percent according to the conference so it's interesting I've not done this poll in in this respect before so the numbers are actually changing as people are actually putting in the input so we have 27 percent yes 40 percent no and 31 percent depends on the conference okay so one of the things that I find for me it definitely depends on the conference it depends on whether I'm speaking whether I'm you know um, in a new country, in a new province, new state, um, or whether I'm actually exhibiting. That kind of really depends on my nervous level. But one of the things that I have actually used as a tool that takes the nervousness away, and there is there is a value in actually being slightly nervous because it does, it's, you know, it's like fear. It's your bio, body's biological ready responses. And so you are much more likely to... Um, be engaged if you have a little bit of excitement built up around it. So we're going to actually, in this conference, it's all about learning what you need to know as a practitioner. And it's really coming from that place of service. So when you actually come from a place of service and you're there learning, um, coming from that place of service, it's a really powerful way to overcome nerves. And at this point, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the conference. If you haven't already thoroughly gone through the pages, I'm going to give a little um, shout out to actually what you're going to see. So it's Balancing Stress, a Holistic Roadmap, and you can actually find that um, at the in the CSNN AA um, Alumni Association website. Um, all the details are there for the conference, and there's some amazing speakers that they're actually featuring. Um, plenty of speakers throughout the, the weekend, and Helgi Maki is actually going to talk about mindful awareness for stress reduction. So it's tech techniques to manage stress using sophrology. So if you don't know about sophrology as a tool to manage stress, Helgi's going to talk all about that. We also have Sarah Ulahen. Sorry, Sarah, I will learn how to pronounce your, your name properly at the conference, okay? Um, she's actually going to be exposing our favorite topic at the conference, PMS. Now, <laughs> that's the, the, the conference is actually um, saying that that's their favorite uh, topic, as I figure that the large percentage of people in the room have actually either experienced PMS, and I'm certainly everyone in the room is actually impacted by it. We know that, that how we live and what we eat and, you know, environmental factors definitely impact PMS. So this is really good to actually find out what you can actually tell your clients to avoid um, to in, in order to minimize the effects of PMS. And I remember hearing a tip about um, that raw broccoli can actually help with PMS. And recently at a presentation I gave to a group of octogenarians, I asked them how long it would take them to eat a raw cup of broccoli. And I was trying to compare it against a cooked cup of broccoli. And, and one of the guys piped up and he said, uh, about a year. <laughs> So I'm not, not certain that that tool's um, relevant for octogenarians anyway as far as um, minimizing PM, the effects of PMS. So next we have Karen DeVita, who's the president of Biotics Canada. She's actually going to be exposing the many different health conditions caused by heavy, met heavy metal toxicity, um, which as we know is a really important and relevant topic today. And we also have Bob Gottfried, who's going to talk about stress, anxiety, and the ADHD brain. So individuals with attention deficit order and learning disorders are significantly more prone to anxiety, excessive stress, worry, impulsivity, and other mood disorders. And he's going to be talking about that, which we know is a big factor. 
And Dr. David Wang is going to talk about stress and hormonal imbalance. So he's going. We're going to explore stress-related ailments that account for 75 to 95 percent of doctors' visits, and yet it goes mostly undiagnosed. So David Wang is going to actually talk about that from a ND's perspective. And one of the things that we know is absolutely essential in managing stress. And we know that there's plenty of information to say how healthy stress is, is, I'm sorry, how healthy it is to deal with stress is laughter. And Meg Soper is actually going to be the conference keynote that finishes the conference. And it's going to definitely end on a high note um, because she's going to help us stop that brain chatter and lighten up, at, not just at the conference, but I'm guessing in life. So what I'd like you to do right now as a little tool um, is I just want you to close your eyes for a second and just kind of relax. Take a deep breath. I'm going to start talking about you. And so I want you to get really, really present. If you haven't already, if I can get you to just close the door if you're in a private room, shut off Facebook or any other thing that might be demanding your attention right now. And really just focus on your breath. And start to observe, is there any chatter going on in your brain right now, in your mind? What's actually happening for you? Just feel, be present with it. I want you to pop your hand just on your belly, almost like you know, you're soothing your belly as you would soothe a little child. Pop your other hand on your heart. Just kind of connect with those two parts, the, the soothing part of your belly that says, you know, I'm good, I'm okay. And the part of your heart that knows everything is all right. Love a recent expression that someone pointed out to me, as long as you're alive, there's way more right going on with your body than bad or negative. I just want you to check in with yourself. Just actually feel, how does it actually feel to be in your body right now? What are the thoughts that are going on in your head? Are you experiencing any stress or anxiety? Are you in a happy place? Are you excited? Are you worried about anything? I just want you to take any thoughts, concerns, and feelings that might be taking you from being absolutely present in the moment. And just what I like to do is just collect them into thought and cloud bubbles. And then I just, as a thought comes up, I just pop it in a cloud bubble and I just blow it away into the distance, distance with a deep breath. I blow it away. So just keep doing that with any thoughts that you have, putting them into cloud bubbles and then blowing them away. And I want you to just be present for this moment and acknowledge that the next few minutes is very much particularly about you and how that you can actually get the most out of this conference and this tool applies to many other conferences. So take a deep breath and if you haven't already, open your eyes. You may not have closed them, I may not have told you to do that. And hopefully you're just a little bit more relaxed than when I started that little meditation. I want you to Imagine that you've actually gone to the conference and that you've had the most amazing experience at it, that it served you on every single level that you could have anticipated and expected. And just going forward with this webinar and our, our time together, I just want you to 
imagine the perfect and the most amazing outcome for you. What, what actually will serve you ultimately? Because what serves you ultimately will serve other people. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, so Joanne, thank you very much for mentioning Michael Sacco of Choco So, um, who's actually doing his PhD on the 20 teachings of cacao. Pretty awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just, just started to notice the, the conferences here. Hello, everyone who said a hello to me. Okay, Maggie, you've just moved from BC nine months ago. Hope you're enjoying it there. Ashley Joyce, awesome. You know Ashley? She's a sweetheart. Can't wait to see you at the conference. Karen, hopefully. Um, Karen from Nova Scotia, awesome. Coming in. Uh, this is Mima, executive assistant at CSNN 8A. She's saying hello. Um, she's not sure why she's being called Jacqueline, and she's looking forward to seeing us all. If you can't see the, the chats, I just wanted to kind of share that with you. Um, there we go. Great. Um, okay. Go. Um, yes. Okay. So um, we have lots of friendly people online. Great to know. Okay. So let's get back to you and the conference and having the most um, getting the most out of your conference and enjoying it the most. So speakers are a fabulous part of the conference and definitely they're, you know, the highlight. It's what, um, you know, associations like CSNN AA invest heavily in getting the best speakers. They put a lot of thought into it and the topic matters, you know, they're very concerned that you're going to actually get awesome value from the conference and you will. The content I'm sure will be absolutely amazing as it was last year. But I want you to know that the speakers can teach you a lot more than even what's, you know, the content that they're actually sharing with you on stage. And that there's so much of how they actually show up and are doing life and what's actually brought them to the point of actually being there that you can actually learn a lot from. So remember, just what they're saying is one thing but there's so much more to them. And I kind of look at it as um, the iceberg when you see the speaker on stage and they only have an hour to share with you, it's kind of the tip of the iceberg. And you can know that in order to actually get there to that point where they've been invited to speak, there's a great deal more below, um, below the, uh, the surface of the water that you can actually really access if you have the opportunity to kind of speak and connect with them. So I just want to see Carrie it lives in Calgary. She says, I live in Calgary, but I've been contemplating going to the event. Carrie, I hope you come along. Um, I hope this webinar gives you some incentive and excitement around coming. And if you do, by all means, please come and say hello. Okay. Oops. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So this is what I want to talk about now is how to get noticed and connect with the right people at the conference who can actually help and accelerate your career and business. Now, the first thing to figure out before you're going to the conference is actually get clear on why you're going. Do a little bit of journaling or some writing around, around this, some meditation, some visualization. What is the main thing that you actually want to go there for? What is it that you'd like to get out of it? How would you actually like to connect with people? And remember, it's not about meeting a vast array of people. And the other thing I love to, to share is that sometimes going to a conference isn't always about meeting the people you think you're going to meet. And it's quite interesting because I've signed up for conferences to meet certain people and I've actually got to the conference and the universe had something else in mind for me. And the people that I've actually met not only have at times I have led to lifelong friendships and deep and meaningful friendships, but sometimes they've actually led to business connections I never could have anticipated. So there's nothing wrong with setting the intention. I absolutely think it's a great thing to do. But always kind of be open to this or even something better because sometimes what we wish for ourselves, um, the universe has something even better in mind. But I want to share with you some things that I've learned over the years of attending conferences about how to get um, people, the right people, you know, that 
that are going to be right for you, your business, and your trajectory and career, um, how to actually get in touch with them and how to connect with them. So there's a wonderful expression, you know, about um, people don't care about how much you know until they know about how much you care. And often when we're wanting to connect with with people of significance or people we perceive would be a good connection or people of significance, we often um, want to tell them about ourselves. And what I've discovered is that people, you know, they want to take an interest in you, right? But they want you to take an interest in them, okay? And if you want to know how to be the most interesting person um, they meet at a conference, start to take an interest in them and ask them questions. So this is one of my, my, kind of my best tips for networking, I believe, is that really engage in conversations that show that you're definitely interested in other people. And you will find that as you really see people and notice them and find out what makes them unique, they, the right people will ask the same of you. And it will be a reciprocal arrangement and you will actually see that energy. When you have that kind of exchange, you know that that's someone that you are really meant to be working with. Okay, so how to network in a way that's more effective and makes the event more enjoyable? Well, this is my belief. Meaningful conversations lead to meaningful connections. And the conferences that I've been to where I've actually met with people who become very significant in both my business and my career, they usually started off with authentic, transparent, and meaningful conversations. So that whole thing around small talk, who here hates small talk at conferences? Can I get, if you want, just to pop a little chat in the chat window and let us know. Is that a yes or a no? Who hates small talk? Chat, give us a little chat, let us know. If not, you can actually um, tell us if you like, you may like, Small talk. There we go. Okay. So far, I don't think I've created a poll for that. Let's see. Just checking it. Nope. I haven't created a poll for that. Anyway. One of the tips that I actually, okay, Maggie's actually being honest and she's put up her hand. I'm not very good at it. Um, <laughs> Ashley, I like talking. <laughs> okay. Um, Karen, is that yes, you do like small talk or yes, you don't? Rita, she says not, not interested in small talk. You know what I find is um, some is good and I enjoy meeting lots of people, says Joanne. And that's that's great. Definitely some is good. And, and I'm not suggesting by any means that you start off the conversation telling people about your, you know, your deepest concerns for the universe or anything like super, super heavy. But um, uh, definitely with small talk, it's something that um, can actually segue into more meaningful conversations. And Karen says, I love meaningful conversations and authenticity, authentically connecting with people. And that's absolutely, I agree that, that these are the things that um, uh, make life interesting, not just conferences. And Ashley says that she loves talking and meeting people and hearing their stories, which is awesome. Okay, so meaningful conversations lead to meaningful connections. And how do you have meaningful conversations? Well, one of the tips and tools that I came up with, I was at a conference in, I was at the National Speakers of Conference in New Orleans in 2003 and at that time you know I'm an introvert I don't know about you I don't know if anyone else um, is an introvert but I'm definitely an introvert and done it again um, oops okay sorry I just I'm learning this new system and I, I lost the screen for a second there <laughs> I'm not sure um, if anyone's an introvert but the definition, the classical definition of an introvert is that at a party, if you're feeling or you know, if you're feeling kind of low energy, would you rather go to a party into a crowd of people, or would you rather to go off to yourself and re-energize? Well, for me, I'm definitely an introvert, and for the first part of my life, didn't even know that. So I went to these conferences and I found the small talk and that kind of thing really, really painful. So I started to play a little game and it made all the difference. 
I would ask people, I used, I asked them to tell me three things that I could never possibly know by looking at them. And you would be amazed at how when you're actually looking at someone from a different perspective, not just, okay, how can you help me in business? How can I help you? I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to be sold, but you're genuinely trying to connect with them and find out more about them than what you would superficially imagine or guess from actually looking at them. This is, I, I believe, kind of a, a significant thing in, in uh, developing these meaningful connections and conversations. So that's something that you can actually try um, ask people what it is they possibly I couldn't possibly know by looking at you and I've come up you know there's I've met people and I literally have found out the most amazing things about them whereas by looking at them I've made a certain assumption about how they they do life or where they're coming from and so many times I've been so wrong and I've been so enlightened by that one little tip okay so in the lead up to the conference uh, I just wanted to share a few things that over the years of, uh, of actually going to conferences, these are just a few things that I've learned that made all the difference in what I've actually managed to get out of the conference. You know, my mental capacity at the conference and my level of enjoyment at the conference. So here's just a few of my, my tips. Eat light leading up to the conference, but obviously as a holistic nutritionist, you know, to make it nutritionally dense. So density, definitely light on any carbohydrates um, as far as, you know, the starchy kinds and the grains and sugars and all those kinds of things um, to really go green, you know, have things that are uh, nutri uh, nutrient dense is a really great way to kind of segue. There's nothing worse than going to a conference, eating the healthy food there, and you're actually detoxing at it. <laughs> um, get a good night's sleep. The, in the two nights leading up to the event, so many of us are trying to cram everything we can, you know, as we're trying to get everything done before the end of a conf uh, before we actually leave to go to a conference. And sometimes a sleep is sacrificed. So if you can just understand that everything will actually get done and what you need need to get done will get done, and just make sure that you're in bed at a at a decent time and you have some kind of wind down ritual before you actually get into bed so that you're ready to sleep and, and sleep optimally. One of the things I love to do is to organize some social non-thinking time at the event. So that can be something like a walk, it can be a run, it can be just a social thing like, okay, let's meet up for, you know, coffee. You know, um, Ashley has uh, um, spotted uh, one of the best places in Toronto for a cup of coffee. It's a, a pick your poisons passion that we actually share. So we're actually organizing that um, uh, to catch up and have that. But it can also be just you know, taking your off, yourself off for just five to 10 minutes and doing a meditation to kind of just get yourself centered, you know, really connect with um, what it is that you're here on the world to do and really kind of tap into how can you actually use this conference as a, a leverage point to really get the most out of what it is that you wish to accomplish in life. Okay, so business cards are connection tools. Now, you don't have to have a business card to go to a conference, and I certainly over the years have, um, when I have gone to conferences, I've sometimes I've actually forgotten business cards, and I'm really stressed out about it, um, but the truth is, is that more often than not, it's important to get someone else's details than to give your details out. If you meet someone of significance that it's, you know, you felt a really strong connection with, if you get their details, you are much more likely to get in touch with them than they are with you. So there's two things about that. Um, we are all busy and when you get a business card, and I certainly had this happen over the years, you, you might actually leave a conference with up to 100 business cards. And afterwards, you know, it's hard to actually sort out who is who and what is what. So if you do get a business card, you want to write some notes on it. That's from the point of actually receiving a business card so you can actually connect with that person. And that's where those things, if you tell, tell me three things about you would never guess um, from looking at you, that's one of those things you can write down because those are the things that often make people really memorable. From the point of view of actually giving out a business card, I strongly recommend this, no matter how good looking or how you don't think you're good looking enough, grab 
a picture, get your best picture and pop it on your business card. And this is not about vanity. It's that when I have 100 business cards and I leave a conference, how am I going to remember what you look like? It's, you know, not everyone has uh, an, an awesome memory, even if they are eating holistically. And one of the ways you can actually make things easier for people to reconnect with you is to put a picture of yourself on your business card. Now, there's two things. Canadians tend to be really modest. So you can pop your picture on the back of the card. And if you really are struggling with the whole kind of vanity issue about putting a picture on your card, you can actually watermark it or kind of have it in a gray scale. So it's kind of behind your details, but it's definitely um, a very recognizable picture of you. So you, you want to do that. And there are other ways you can actually connect with people. If you have a business or um, say, you know, you have an information product, you know, or you have something free that you can actually give people, you can give them, you know, a postcard with that information on it, or you can take their details and say, I'd love to send you this. So it's a great way to kind of um, give before you get, and I'm going to talk a bit about that in a while too. And also organize a few pre-conference connections. When I went to TED in 2008, what I was so impressed with what they did was they published a list of everyone that was going to the conference. And you could actually make connections ahead online with people who are going to the conference. Now, Facebook makes that really easy now. So if you're on the Facebook page, you can actually find out who's going and start to find out who's, who's doing what around the world. You know, it's not just all about you and your business. And what you'll find is the more res research you do about what other people are doing, um, in the world, you might actually want to reach out to them on Facebook and say, hi, I saw your profile, I see you're going to the conference, you know, and just what is it about them that actually inspired you to actually connect with them? What is it, you know, that you, you've noticed about what they're doing um, that's of interest? And maybe you can actually organize to make, you know, time to actually catch up at the conference, sit together at a specific talk. If, say, you've identified you're both really interested in, um, you know, environmental toxins, you can... Um, attend the session that's really geared towards, you know, heavy metal to toxicity, or maybe you both have an interest in ADHD, and, um, you know, you can actually attend that session together, or even just having a cup of tea during the break or lunch one of the times. So you can actually organize this ahead of time, and it's just so nice to actually go to a conference and meet new people and also know in, in advance you've got some friends there. That, for me, always makes a conference much more interesting and exciting. Okay, so now I'm going to um, talk about how to get noticed by the right people and connect with them. So, and I want you to keep in mind who the right people are for you. And, and just that little um, thing that I'd said before about um, sometimes the people who are most significant for us to connect with, we don't even know them yet. And so just kind of keep an open mind at that. So just before I go into that, um, Maggie says, any times... For those who haven't graduated yet, any times for those who haven't graduated, we're only a few months into our course, but can't wait to see what this conference will bring us. Any tips? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and I think um, it's an absolutely wonderful thing, Maggie, that you're attending the conference, even though you haven't graduated. It's, and I see it as preparatory work. So same thing really applies, that if you see people who have actually graduated, who are doing something that's actually interesting to you, you can actually connect with them ahead of time on Facebook. And this is a way, you know, you can almost like an informal mentoring through, throughout the conference that you can actually connect with them. And, um, and the other thing, too, is that if there are people um, in the expo area who they might need volunteers. So you might have certain times at the conference that you're interested or willing to, you know, say, can I, can I mend your stall or, you know, come and talk to you at the stall or keep you company or bring you a cup of tea at the stall, or you can even do this with one of the speakers. So these are great ways to actually connect with people who are doing the things that you aspire to do. So I hope that helps. Okay, so let's go. Um, connecting with the right people. Keep an open mind. Give before you get. And that's where I just kind of mentioned that to Maggie, or sp speaking specifically to Maggie's um, point, is that just offer to grab a cup of tea for someone, you know, if that's a speaker, if it's one of the, the board, you know, it's a certain alumni person, um, you know, there's always opportunities to be creative and, and get. So if you know of that secret wonderful spot um, to get that cup of coffee or something, you know, that um, 
you know people might appreciate maybe you can actually bring it to the conference in the morning there's just there's so many ways that once you get creative and you start to think how might I actually be of service and help people what I used to do when I was going to conferences and I there was someone who I really wanted to, to meet and have a little bit um, time with I would always offer to pick them up at the airport or take them to the airport at the end of the conference and I would often do things like particularly if I wasn't going to holistic conferences and there was a holistic speaker or someone who was actually really um, struggling, you know, to, you know, traveling, that whole kind of thing. I would actually offer to bring them holistic food because I knew it wasn't easily accessible for them. And for this conference, Karen um, Porter has actually, uh, who's one of my students in the Return to Food Academy, has actually offered to pick me up from the airport, which is awesome. <laughs> I promise you and and you'd be amazed at how generous people are with information when you extend that generosity first okay um, Carrie yes there will be people and speakers um, who are actually suggesting um, helping you to build your business so there definitely are going to be people there and remember that there's a speaker who's specifically um, talking about that I can't remember right now her name right now but she's definitely on the schedule and remember there are people who are actually building successful businesses. And if you find people who are doing what, you, what you'd what you love to be doing, even just asking them one question to help build your business can make the whole difference and can actually give you the value of the conference in itself. It's pretty amazing. So give before you get and be creative. Okay, so remember too that most people are actually seeking significance. Tony Robbins talks about this as, you know, one of our, our you know primary human needs and what's important to us and for us and even those people who you think might need it the least also want to be seen and recognized and when you actually truly see them not for maybe the great things they've achieved but maybe something specifically they specifically that they're interested in or that they've done when you actually can see that and take them for uh, face value to really connect with them and notice that and just be present to that you'd be amazed at how memorable you become and so even you know some of the speakers that you'll you'll actually meet there you might be surprised at how significance is still something that's important to them and and it's often why they're actually on stage speaking um, for those who truly don't you know need or require significance the you know the um, stage can be the furthest place that they want to be so never underestimate the value of seeing someone and that is the kind of the core part of significance in in our world is we want to be seen and we want to be known and so often when I know for me when I've actually gone up to certain speakers I want to be seen and so I might and certainly in early days I would go up and start talking all about myself and the truth is, is that particularly after someone's given, um, they want to, um, it's just normal for them to want to be acknowledged um, and to, to be seen. So I remember when I was at the TED in 2008, Jill Bolte Taylor, if you haven't seen her TED talk, it's one of the best TED talks and it's called A Stroke of Insight. And um, I was in line to see her, I was the fourth person to speak to her after she'd come off the TED Talk stage and gave this amazing talk. And I can honestly say that even though I was the fourth person to speak to her, I was the first person to actually congratulate her on her talk because she, she reached people in such a deep way that particularly those who had actually been struck with, you know, um, who had experienced the effects of stroke either through their own personal life or their family members, went up and they spoke to her about their family members or they spoke to them about spoke to her about herself now just to understand the whole thing the dynamics if you're not already familiar with it when a speaker comes off stage there's this place where they're at which is called the speaker high and in order to actually give on the level um, to give often people have to go deeply within themselves and so it's almost like they can't hear you unless you're actually really seeing them and seeing their information and so just just a little tip also another little tip now this is completely unsolicited it might be slightly off topic but never give a speaker feedback about what they've done wrong <laughs> immediately as they come off the stage that's just 
that's just a big speaker downer. And um, yeah, little tip of advice, never ever do that. So just acknowledge what it is about um, what people are doing, whether it's, you know, speaker or someone who's on the board or someone you want to connect with. Um, really try to, to go deeper beyond the surface and, and, and um, see them and congratulate them for what they've done right. Now, another thing that often happens is people will come off the stage or they'll be at a conference and they literally can be in a place where they've got a thousand things being thrown at them and demands on them that you can't actually see at the moment. They can be juggling a lot. And I love this quote that says, um, everyone be kind for everyone is facing a battle you know nothing about. And sometimes when we approach someone who we want to connect with and they're not fully present with us, we can perceive that to them being um, thinking that they're better than us or snooty, uh, that snooty or, you know, they're too busy, you know, that kind of thing. You would be amazed at just how often when people don't fully see you or give you the attention, it just means they have so much going on. It's really hard for them to totally be present with you. So don't take it personally and really just understand that um, uh, if you just introduce yourself, you know, and, and use those tips to actually see them and get noticed. And, and if it's really, you know that there's a significant um, connection that you'd like to make, make that offer of help. If that's not there, see if you can get their contact details because you'd actually like to some way assist them in the future. And that's been really helpful for me over the years in conferences. Okay, so identifying the best information to implement in your business and work. This is kind of an ethereal, almost, you know, very holistic, almost woo-woo <laughs> um, answer to this question. It's not, you know, those uh, uh, hard, you know, factual ways of doing it, but this has worked for me because what happens is we come back from conferences and we are overwhelmed and overloaded. And what I'd love you to do is try and be as present as you possibly can in the sessions to really grasp not just the information, but the intention behind what um, the speakers are saying. And even those conversations that happen at lunch, at snack time, you know, in the hallways and at the expo. And I want you to really just kind of, you know, tap in, even if you can't do it physically, but just in your own mind's eye to put your hand on your, on your belly and your hand on your heart and just connect and go, you know, what is about this information that's resonating with me? What is it that I really need to act on? And ask yourself questions from a place um, of really coming from that heart, gut, head, and intuition. We were given all of those wonderful qualities for a reason. And so when we start to tap in and go, what is the information I most need to be attentive for and attend? And what is the information I most need to take away and implement and apply in my business? The thing not to listen to is your fears. And sometimes it can be uh, very difficult to kind of find that fine line of what is it that's holding me back? Is it my hesitation based on my instinct saying don't do it? Or is it actually based on a fear that's saying don't step out of your comfort zone? Your ego saying don't step out of your comfort zone. And I would really encourage you to then go back, you know, go back to listening to your heart, your gut, your head and intuition and really distinguishing and ask for that kind of inner wisdom and guidance and that genius that we all have within us to go, what is the right decision? Is this fear or is this just me, um, my ego wanting to keep the status quo? Because as you know, you've heard this quote, I'm sure many times in your life already, that the great things that will happen in your life will happen outside your comfort zone. And there's going to be a level of fear that actually comes with that. And the best way to address that fear is to feel it and do it anyway if your heart and your gut and your mind and your instinct are saying, yes, this will be a good thing for me to actually apply, implement, or follow through with. Okay, so if you haven't already registered for the conference, there's actually going to be a prize draw tonight. Um, so if you just go to the um, CSNN alumni um, dot org forward slash CHNC dash 2015 dash buy dash tickets forward slash and you can easily just access that by going to the um, the 2015 conference page and then just where it says buy. So the first person on this webinar who actually books a ticket 
um, to go to the conference if you're not already registered um, is going to get this prize draw that I mentioned earlier, which is that um, coaching laser coaching session with me, Zudo Maker, um, the Return to Food book, um, and a digital DVD package. So one of the things I want to share with you is a phrase that I, I learned called, um, well, I didn't learn, I actually coined it. <laughs> In 1999, I had given my first talk at a symposium of gastronomy. Now, I don't know about you, but you might actually see yourself in the future giving talks at the conference. Maybe you're fearful about it, but there's something within you that's excited at that thought and is excited about you potentially being one of those thought leaders that people actually look up to and admire and seek for advice. And there might be that little bit within you, maybe you've done this already, but maybe you want to go to, um, to the next level. And what I would encourage you to do is if you haven't already, um, have, haven't already signed up for the conference, to imagine taking an emotional bungee jump. When I first gave that talk at the Symposium of Gastronomy, I was with my peers and people who were significantly further along in their hero's journey doing amazing things in the business. And I almost chickened out like six times and I had a great excuse at the time. I was going through IVF and um, all kinds of drugs were going through my body and it was super healthy. It was long, long before I was embracing holistic uh, living. But I kept going with this this dream that I had of actually delivering a talk that was, in my opinion, something that was practical and useful because I, I thought at the at that time the talks at the symposium were a bit heady and not necessarily very practical. And so despite my fears, I actually delivered it and I had people clapping and laughing and connecting and crying through that talk. And it was my first significant talk. I spent six months preparing for it. And it felt like I had just done this emotional bungee jump. I'd taken this leap of faith. You know, I secured, you know, my safety um, shackles and all that. But I took that jump and that fear into the unknown. And this is the place where these things kind of start. When you go to conferences uh, where you're actually going with your peers who are doing the things that you ultimately want to be doing in your business and career, this is the place to actually um, take this leap. Oh, Patricia, thank you. Um, what sweet words. She says, hi, Sherry, thank you so much for supporting us on the conference. Your message is so inspiring and wise. I look forward to seeing you again this weekend. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. I really appreciate that. Um, and if there's any way that I can actually support you guys in your emotional bungee jumps, I would um, love to. And so in that vein, um, the prize draw is a signed copy of Return to Food, a Zoodle Maker digital DVD ebook package, and a laser coaching session with me um, at the conference. And as I said, if you're too busy and it's just too much to kind of take in with me at the conference, we can do it later via Skype. Okay, now, for those of you who have already registered, I have a gift for you. Don't worry, you haven't missed out. I'm actually creating for my, um, my angels, as I call them, at the Return to Food Academy. I'm creating this product. It's an information product. Um, I'm going to be charging the general public $197. Of course, my crew get it for free um, as one of their bonuses. But I'm creating an information product on how to create information products that sell. Now, for all the things that I've actually done in the teaching and speaking and running seminars and lifestyle makeovers and audits and, you know, speaking at conferences around the world and on television, I have to say that the, the products that, to me, make the most sense are information products because these are things that you can actually you can actually sell while you're sleeping and they are fabulous and they're wonderful tools that you can actually use to leverage the work that you most want to be doing in the world. So I'm actually creating that video series and it'll come with some PDFs. And if you come to the booth 13B, it's just the last booth as you're going into the conference area near the food, which when you um, get to know me, you'll understand why that's significant for me. <laughs> Love my food. Um, yeah. So come to the, booth and um, just sign up for that information product and I will give you that um, for free and I'm going to include in that things like you know 
how to actually create products that people want because I've actually made information products that um, I thought were the bee's knees, but they weren't actually um, what my what my target market wanted, and so it didn't actually end up going anywhere. So I just want to give you that as a little um, no strings attached gift um, at the conference and for attending this webinar tonight. So if you haven't already, register now. Um, buy your ticket um, at the link you can actually see there. Um, and, uh, oh, <laughs> Carrie, thank you. Uh, Carrie says, I've seen you speak in Calgary and you are incredibly inspirational. I want to hug you right now, Carrie. Thank you very much. That was not a paid endorsement, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so register now for the conference. Love to see you there. Love to actually help out. And I'm gonna leave you with two last thoughts before we take questions, um, if you have any. Uh, this is one of the illustrations from my book uh, that one of the ones I'm most proud of, this funny little illustration says, become your own hero. And just a little side note, um, when I created this illustration, I was in a cafe in Melbourne, and I did the outline of the his face, and I you know drew his cape and all those things. Um, and the next day, I was in a cafe across town, and I was doing the detail work in his hair, and I was had my little cloth bound book that I, I love to do my illustrations in. And I looked up and there's this guy who looked exactly like this drawing. Now, I was drawing in my picture a black guy, but I was just doing it in black and white. So you couldn't see that he's a black guy. But I turned my book around and I pushed it in front of this guy's face and he was white. And he just looked at it and he goes, he just burst out laughing. And he said, did you just draw that now of me? And I was like, no, I drew it yesterday. And I mentioned the cafe, which was across town. And he's just like, whoa. <laughs> but the, the sentiment in this picture is become your own hero. Do the thing you fear you cannot do, but feel you were born to do. The thing you most admire in others, but in your own unique, amazing, loving, and I would say authentic way. This really is where we actually gather together to come together to share our gifts, to share our tools, to share the things that um, we have to offer. And that's how we get significance. The best form and way to actually have significance in this world is to actually give to one another and to actually share of your talents. You have amazingness in you. You have genius in you. And I know because I see it in absolutely everyone. In fact, I think one of my guests is seeing people's potential even more so than they can see it in themselves. And I promise you, when you get together and you share that with other people and you start to hone your knowledge, um, your gifts and your talents and your skills and everything that you've done before coming to this conference has prepared you to actually be there. So rest in that place of assuredness to know that you are actually in the right place doing the right thing for you. So um, Joanne says, looking forward to seeing you again this year, Sherry. I left totally inspired after chatting with you. That's fabulous, Joanne. Thank you. And Karen says, amazing webinar, Sherry. XOXO. Ooh, big hugs and love to you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so this is my last slide um, before we take questions. If anyone would like to ask questions, you're welcome to. Um, this is uh, a little illustration by Meister Eckhart, and he says, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is, thank you, it is enough. And so I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful that you actually made time tonight to attend this webinar. Uh, again, you know, it is the, the little things that we do that ultimately lead to our business success. And sometimes it is the bigger leaps of faith. Um, so attending this session tonight is just preparing you to actually have an awesome time to make the most out of your conference. And I really applaud you for putting in that little extra effort for, um, for your career and your life. Because I know that everyone who gets into this profession is here because they really want to make the world a better place. That's why I'm here. And I know the best way that I can actually do that and to get supported to do that is to be with like-minded people. We belong to the same tribe. And so thank you for showing up in the world and, and showing the courage that it took to even be where you are now. Because I know that as you build on your courage, you're going to create something even better in the future. But right where, where you are right now is absolutely perfect. So thank you for being here. And Ashley, thank you. You said, Sherry, you're so generous and inspiring and eager to see you again and visit your booth. Well, please, as I said, 
please come alone, say hello to me in booth 13. If you haven't all registered, already registered, please do. This is a wonderful conference and a wonderful thing that not only um, will support you in your um, future, but you can actually attend and show up and be there of service to others in ways you haven't even imagined. Great. Okay. <laughs> Ashley, you're the best. Um, thank you. So it, does anyone have any questions? Thank you, Janiel. Okay, Maggie, sharing your opinion, or maybe for some others can advise, would you take notes while other speakers um, are talking or just take it all in and be present? Maggie, this really, a great question. This really depends on how you learn best. Now, um, some people, they, what, what they find is as they take notes, they're reiterating the information um, and it's kind of instilling in a certain, certain manner. There's certain people who actually take in more energetically. So it depends how you learn. There's two things. And it also depends on the speaker. If the speaker is giving lots of information, then that's the kind of thing, technical things, um, that they may not be giving out in a handout. You definitely want to take notes for that. Where there are others who are more the inspirational speakers who might just give you some tips and you know and tools and strategies that you're going to want to write down. Um, but they're probably going to work more kinesthetically on you the more present you are. So if notes keep you present, take them. But if they take you away from actually being present to the information that's being delivered, don't take notes. Again, trust your gut, your in instinct, and your intelligence to guide you. Great. Are there any other questions before we wrap up tonight? I'm just going to direct you back to the slide. Okay. So if you haven't already booked, please do. Um, and if you have booked and you're intending to book, please come and say hello at the conference. And thank you again so much for showing up tonight. Sending you all big loves and hug no matter where you are and what you're doing in this world and whether you um, come or not. So have a wonderful, wonderful evening and a lead up to the conference. And I hope this has been of value and help to you. Much love. Take care, everyone. And good night. <laughs>